Hi guys, this is Tara from Tara's Treasure Trove. Today we're using dye inks to do some ink blending with the Fabula Stamp and Thin Cut set from Close to My Heart to create this 6x6 witchy piece of artwork. Now the dye inks do require more elbow grease than a pigment ink or distress oxide, but they will work for ink blending. I'm using eggplant, sapphire, black, and wisteria today. You'll notice two styles of pads here. The first one that I'm pulling is black. That's in our old style. They were a little more difficult to open, um, and the size is smaller, but they do still work. You can still use them. You can still re-ink them. The new style is this wisteria. We've changed the look. The pad itself is magnetic. It's much larger, which is really nice. And because it's magnetic, if you stack it with other pads, then it's not going to move. They're not going to separate. It stays in place. It's great. Um, you can also squeeze the pad to put ink into the top of it, like a palette, and use that for coloring. I don't use any fancy tools for my ink blending, just one of our sponges that I cut with scissors into little pieces and I simply wash them after every use so they don't have to track what colors I'm using with. I've never had a problem with transferring colors. Here I am grabbing a 6x6 six six piece of Wisteria cardstock and we're going to go in first with the Wisteria ink. Now I am just going to dab my sponge into the ink pot and start to work that ink into the paper by using small circular motions and just rubbing that ink into the cardstock. It does take time to build up. Pigment inks like Distress Oxides, they sit on top of the paper so they spread on very easily, but these dye inks will settle into the cardstock because they are water-based, so you just kind of have to work that ink into it. But you can see it does build up. Um, it, it only took me, I'd say, about 10 minutes overall to do the whole background, um, it, but it does take a little bit of time, and the inks do blend into each other, so you just keep dabbing and laying the ink on. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up to double time so you don't have to sit through the whole 10 minutes but I'm just continuing to lay color until I'm happy with where it's at. I'll also be coming back to this color which you'll see pretty soon but now I'm going to go in with the second color which is sapphire and sapphire is one of my favorite blues I love, love, love blue. So I do, I'm going to do a very large section of this piece of art in the blue. Um, first of all, because it's my favorite color. Second of all, because I want my witch to kind of stand out. And I know I'm going to be coloring her in purples. So I want her to stand out against the blue in the background instead of um, blending in with the purples that I'm including. Now, the sapphire, as it's being laid down, looks really textured. You can see here, it looks very, very textured. But as the ink dries, it does tend to kind of smooth out and settle in. And while there is a little bit of that textured look left, it looks pretty smooth when everything is said and done. So you'll see that, you know, in the finished image it looks a lot better than it does when you first lay it down and the ink's pretty wet. Uh, once I get to a point where I'm very happy with the sapphire ink, what I do is go back to the wisteria color and go over the section where the two colors are supposed to blend in. And that wisteria will push back a little bit on the sapphire, but mostly it will help to blend those two colors into a little bit of a smoother transition.
You can leave it like this, but I'm going to mount it on black cardstock, so I'm cutting a quarter inch off all sides, leaving a five and a half by five and a half background. In the interest of saving time, I have pre-cut and pre-stamped the cat and the witch from the Fabulous set. Now I want to make the cat more magical by filling him in with the black shimmer brush. Thanks to the shimmer brush, he's now fit for any witchy household. I'm now going to color in my witch with our brand new Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. I love these markers because they make shading really easy, especially if you're not a professional artist, which I think most of us aren't. So with these markers, you can easily get the shading that you're looking for because they come with a light shade on one end, a dark shade on the other end, and then they also pull apart in the middle to reveal a middle shade. And then what you do is saturate the entire section you're coloring with the light shade. You go in with the middle shade and dark shades to get the shadows that you're looking for. And then you blend it out by coloring over the whole section again with the light shade. And you'll see me doing that here uh, with the legs. I thought the shadows would be coming on the back of the legs from the bottom of her skirt. And then in the hair, I thought the shadows would be coming from the brim of her witch's hat. So you can see how I got my shading and how easily it was to blend all those things out. And if you do get some streaky lines, just go over it again with the light marker. Once you saturate it with that color again, it will spread out and the blending will be perfect. In this image, I used citrus green, earth brown, lavender, purple, fair skin, and true black. I will list all of the products used down below so that you can refer to that later, but I think you can see how smoothly the shading on the legs is coming out and it'll be the same with the hair. It's really a beautiful blend and it does take some time as all worthwhile things do, but let's face it, coloring is relaxing.
can't have her kitty looking all magical and sparkly, but not her. I'm going in here with the Wisteria Shimmer Brush, which is a brand new color, and going over the witch's hat and the witch's dress. The lavender tri-blend marker that we used looks really pretty with this shimmer brush. See what I mean? Now we're ready for some serious witching. At this point, I decided the background needed just a little something more and heat embossed some silver stars into the night sky. I really think these silver stars are the perfect touch and they're magic all of their own when you watch that embossing powder come to life. Using a glue tape runner, I'm going to mount the background onto a six by six piece of black cardstock. And boy, don't you think that border really makes the background pop out? It looks truly magical but I still think it needs one more thing. So we're going to heat emboss a silver moon. You do this by taking your stamp and dipping it in Versamark ink. Versamark ink is a clear ink that stays wet long enough for you to get your embossing powder poured onto it. Once you stamp the image, you're going to pour the powder over it. I'm using Ranger embossing powder in the color silver and I'm pouring it over a coffee filter. That way, if there's any excess, I can tap it into the coffee filter and then use that coffee filter to pour it back into the jar. That way, the materials last me longer. Then you heat the paper until the powder sets, and you'll be able to tell because it will go from a dull silver powder to bright and shiny. It's really beautiful. I think that was the exact perfect touch that we needed, and now the background is complete. What do you guys think? Using some wet glue, we're gonna go ahead and attach our witch and our cat. I use a wet glue instead of a tape runner because I wanna have a little wiggle room when I'm setting them down. That way, if I need to move something around or make an adjustment, I have a couple seconds to do so. And I had to do a little touch up with the black shimmer brush you can see right there. Using the eggplant and black inks, I sponged out a blended title bar using the same technique we used for the background and heat embossed the word witching. I modified my stamp by cutting it to get just the word witching. You could also mask it and if you'd like to see a video on how I modify my stamps with cutting, let me know in the comments below. I mounted it with foam tape and that's the last piece to this bit of artwork. I am so pleased with how this turned out. It really looks witchy and magical, just in time for the Halloween season. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything you would have done differently, also post that so that people get different ideas. If you wanna purchase any of the products used in this video, the information for what was used will be posted in the description as well as links to my website where you can purchase them. And if you guys like this video, please give it a like. If you loved it, I invite you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see what I upload in the future. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.